Um, I'm just kidding. We, we, we had a good time. If you've got your Bibles, turn to Exodus 33. Um, and we're, we're going to be looking at uh, some stuff here. And um, as you're turning there, um, uh, one more quick announcement. Next Sunday is going to be a very important Sunday um, because we have Pastor Tom Cornell, who's the lead pastor at Sozo Church in Belfair. Okay. Uh, it, uh, all right. Now, um, they, they are really seeing revival there um, at, their, at their church. This is the church where uh, Gary Weens, who is the former director of the IHOP uh, House of Prayer um, uh, in, in the Federal Way kind of area, uh, Gary Weens is now part of that church. This is also where Pastor Greg Daly and Mary go as well. So, like, you've got, like, this, um, this like, uh, apostolic magnet for teachers, there, like, like some incredible teachers. This is like a small little church, but they're seeing signs, wonders, miracles, and deliverance every single Sunday. Um, in fact, um, uh, Pastor Tom and his wife, I'm sure he'll tell this story with us. Okay, so he's going to be here next Sunday and next Sunday night, okay? Um, they, him and his wife came home um, uh, to their house at night. There was a line of people co- co- uh, waiting for them, going down their, their, their sidewalk, a line of people waiting for them to come home so they could receive prayer from them, okay? Um, just recently, just, just in this last month, a, a teenager that had been deaf since birth um, was healed at their youth group, and the ears, and the ears, the ears opened up. If you didn't clap, go ahead and clap, because that's worth celebrating. My God, this is not a golf game. If that was your kid, you'd be going ecstatic. All right. We are, they are seeing, and so I've had, I've had the opportunity of just reaching out to him and just receiving like just a relational mentoring, which basically isn't like a mentoring course. I'm just like calling him up on the phone saying, hey, Pastor Tom, can you speak? And just in like the last month, I've seen more miracles and deliverance just in the last four weeks than I've seen like this entire year. And so, man, uh, all right, now if you're a covenant member here at SRC, um, then you've been invited to a training day on Saturday. But there is required reading for that. If you don't know what I'm talking about and you're a member, you need to see Patty, who is our pastor of administration after this service, okay? There, there's a book that you have to read through real quickly so that you're ready to go for Saturday. Now, on Sunday morning, P- Pastor Tom will be here along with... Um, I'll call him Apostle Romeo because I forget his last name. So I'll give him a, a title, Apostle, and then refer to him by his first name. That just happened. All right. He's from West Africa. Okay. Um, Romeo walks in crazy authority. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll go a little deeper than I did in the first service. Pastor Tom had, had crazy anxiety attacks all the time. Uh, when he went to Africa and met Romeo, Romeo said, would you like to be free of that? He said, sure. He prayed for him, and a demon came out of him. This is an assembly of God pastor. A demon comes out of him. He's immediately healed. No more anxiety attacks. All right. His wife had severe eating problems, uh, uh, stomach issues, okay? And she wanted to get free. She got delivered of a demon as well. Okay. They came back. They're completely healed, and there's no shame in that. They tell their testimony. They're like, it does not mean a loss of dignity. It means the fruit is I'm healed and I had something demonic that was oppressing me. So now this is what their whole church does. Like the church walks in deliverance. And, and so, and, and man, it is so cool. And this is what Jesus said. Jesus said, hey, you go, you cast out demons, heal the sick, raise the dead. And he wasn't just talking to pastors or guys with microphones. He's talking to the body, the body of Christ. So our commitment as leadership here, is to disciple those who have made a, a commitment saying that they have put down roots here. So with our members, our, our responsibility is to see every member at SRC a minister of Christ Jesus, his freedom and glory. So we are going to do everything possible as a church to be equipping the people that, that have, like Bob Jones says, there's too many tumbleweeds in the body of Christ. If, if, then he said, if you want to grow fruit, you need to put down roots. Yep. So that means anyone can come on Sundays and anyone can go and receive literally thousands and thousands of hours of content online. 
But we are, for those who have said, we are covenanting here at Seattle Revival Center. We will give of our time, our passion, our energy, and our finances to see his kingdom come and his will be done. We are, we're building an army and we're not apologizing for it. Yeah. We're not a cruise ship, okay? If you want great music and good coffee, go to Jazz Alley. If you want to join a movement where we are saying we might bleed, we might die, but we will not give up. We will not bow to the chaos. We will hover in it and execute the justice of God or his shalom. If you're irking to see some things change, you're at the right place at the right time. But listen, if you're, just, if you're just kind of bunkered up, you know, with your top ramen and Bud Light waiting for the rapture, sorry, wrong church, okay? Nothing, nothing against Bud Light, but just, okay? Don't want to hurt any feelings. I mean, I don't get it. I don't get it. I mean, yeah, feelings, low calories. So God is doing a new thing. Remember not the former things. And that this year, I am framing out over my life and my family and over this church that this is going to be a center where we gather around the presence of God. For that reason, I've graciously titled today's message, Presence 2021. And now you know the password to all my email accounts. <laughs> Presence, capital P, with an exclamation point at the end. Everybody there? Exodus 33? Now Moses, I'm going to make the cameraman work today. What's up, Tim? Love you, buddy. All right. Now Moses used to take the tent and pitch it outside the camp, far off from the camp, and he called it the tent of meeting. And everyone who sought the Lord, well, there's a, there's a good place for us to pause for a second. And everyone who sought the Lord, who actually cared about the Lord, who actually cared about the things of God, who were not entangled with the spirit of lethargy or apathy, or who considered themselves Christians because they attended a church on a Sunday morning. For everyone who sought the Lord, are you seeking the Lord this year? If so, say, I am seeking the Lord this year. Frame that out over your, over your year. I am seeking the Lord this year. And everyone who sought the Lord will go out, check it out, to the tent of meeting, which was outside the camp. Whenever, check it out, whenever Moses went out to the tent, all the people would rise and each would stand at his own tent and watch Moses until he had gone into the tent. All right, check it out. This is kind of like, imagine if your neighbor was Moses. And imagine that your neighbor built a house in your neighborhood for God. And what if everyone in your entire neighborhood knew that God lived in that house? <laughs> this is what's happening here. Because we read about tents and we're like, I, don't have, I, I, I need a new tent because mine leaks. Like, no, no, no. We got to bring some context here. Like, imagine that at night, your neighbor, Moses, would leave his house and go over to God's house. And imagine if everybody in your neighborhood, whenever this would happen, they would open the doors of their homes, they would stand at the entrance of their home, and they would watch Moses go from his house to the house of God. That's, that's what we're reading here. Okay. Verse 9, when Moses would enter the house of God, the tent of meeting, look at the pillar of cloud would descend and stand at the entrance of the tent and the Lord would speak to Moses. And when all the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance of the tent, all the people would rise and begin 
to worship. Now imagine your whole neighborhood sees the visible, manifest glory cloud of God come upon this house and your whole neighborhood begins to worship. Worthy, worthy is Lord God all. Who was and like, like oh my gosh Thus the Lord used to speak to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend And Moses turned again into the camp his assistant Joshua Joshua my man the son of Nun a young man would not depart from the tent. Now, all that's great, but we're still outsiders. We're watching this thing from the entrance of our homes. But then, this book, the book of Exodus, Moses, he invites us to actually come into this very transparent conversation between Moses and God. Like, this is a very intimate moment. And we get to listen in. Are you ready? You look like it. Verse 12. Moses said to the Lord. Now, by the way, the way this conversation starts, it shows that these guys got some history. Because look at the very first word he says to God. He says, See? You've got some history. If the very first thing you say to somebody is, see, that's like saying, look, or listen. If I was like a guest minister, and I just got up here and I said, look, you'd be like, whoa, who are you? But if Pastor Darren got up and said, look, see, listen, you'd be like, all right, he's a little passionate this morning, but we'll get through it. Why? Because we got some history. We got some rapport. And we see here, Moses, man, he's got some history with God. The very first thing that he says to God is, See, you say to me, bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. See, Moses, previously we read about that he was promised a messenger. A, a, an angelic messenger. And Moses is saying, hey, you've given me this assignment. You've promised me a messenger, but you haven't told me who my messenger is. You've told me I know you by name, and you've also found favor in my sight. Now, therefore, if I found favor in your sight, please show me now your ways that I may know you in order to find favor in your sight. Consider too that this nation, these people, they're your people. Isn't this incredible? This is what Moses says. He says, I know you. We have history. I've encountered you. But on behalf of of revival and restoration of the people of Israel. You have told me that, that, that you would send a messenger, but I've got to know who it is. In fact, I've got to know who you are. I am seeking you for an encounter, and not just an encounter that is a fleeting, momentary idea. I am seeking for the God of the encounter to come and to burn an encounter inside of me, because what you have called me to do I cannot do in and of my own abilities I need for you not just to be with me I need for your encounter to be in me and to fundamentally change me so that I have the disposition and spirit to do what God has called me to do that's what I need right now that's what you need right now that when we look at Seattle, when we look at the culture, when we watch the news, that God, what you've called us to do, it's stinking impossible. In fact, it's flipping wrong. I need an encounter, and not just a little encounter, not just something cute. I need for you to come and reside and let your residing fire burn and forge a new reality in me so that I am fundamentally changed, I am fundamentally different, so that I carry and I possess the disposition of God 
required to recreate and represent his divinity on the earth. And then this is what Moses says. And, and let me remind you, these people are your people. This nation is your nation. This problem is your problem. And if you've called for me to be the agent solution, I am seeking an encounter that would equip me to be able to do what you've called me to do. SRC, this is a word for you. Slap the person next to you and say, this is a word for you. That I'm telling you, look at the person next to you and say, yesterday's encounter is not going to do. Your past due for a life-changing encounter that will equip you to do what God has called you to do. We need to pray for a second because we can't, we can't quite proceed because our natural mind's going to want to play some, some games and, and, and also there's not just our natural mind but there's principalities and powers and little bugs that like to interfere. Father, I seek your presence in this service at this 11 o'clock. Father, I seek your desire to be installed into this atmosphere. God, I seek your dreams to be imparted into that glory realm. And that for those who are seeking after you, that they would find you this morning. Father, I thank you for how you have called me and positioned me and installed me as a priest. Father, covered in your blood and in Christ's righteousness, I stand before you and I ask, Lord, that you would forgive me and us and our church for entangling with the spirit of apathy and lethargy and feeling sorry for ourselves. Father, I ask, Lord, that you would forgive us for sleeping, Lord, while the world is perishing. God, I ask, Lord, that you would forgive us of entangling with a religious spirit. Lord, I ask, Lord, that you would forgive us, that you would wash us clean, and I thank you that by faith we stand forgiven and washed clean. Now, Jesus, I ask that you would judge the spirit of apathy and lethargy, the spirit of religion, the spirit of control, Lord, that you would judge these things in our midst, Lord. That you would judge their influence over our lives, Lord. Lord, that you would judge their influence over our thought life. That you would judge their influence over our thinking. Father, I pray, Lord, that you would come and replace, Lord, these negative, counterfeit spirits, Lord, with the spirit of the faith not in God, but, Lord, the faith of God. Lord, that you would install, Lord, your faith into us like the faith of Abraham. And, Lord, that you would accredit to Towards us as righteousness. We declare we are a company of believing believers that you have redeemed us, called us, anointed us, and ordained us for such a time as this. And we say yes to the plans of God. We say yes to the dream of God. We say yes to the ways of God. We say yes to the oracles of God. Father, I ask that you rebuke all witchcraft in Jesus' name. All witchcraft has been formed against our church, against our families, against my leadership and this leadership team. Father, I pray that you grant the grace and the mercy for such witches, sorcerers, diviners, Lord, to find repentance and grace. Or, Lord, I ask, Lord, that in your judgment, Lord, that you'd remove them, Lord, and their influence upon us as a community and the bride of Christ within this region. Father, I ask, Lord, that you would summon those, Lord, to your throne of grace. Lord, if they will not repent, I ask, Lord, that you would remove them and their influence from our region. Father, we seek, Lord, your father heart. We also seek your kingly heart. We declare the jurisdiction of the king of glory over Seattle. We declare the earth belongs to you. We declare, Lord, the keys of the kingdom, Lord, you are handing over, Lord, to the sons and daughters of God. And, Lord, I ask that we be courageous to respond to the groaning of creation, that the sons of, of God would be awakened in this hour. Lord, we seek you, God. We seek your ways. We seek your understanding. We seek your wisdom. We seek your courage. We say we will not cower. We will not be silent. We will not pr pretend to be the church. We will not play the church. We are the army of God, sons of Abraham, a chosen generation for such a time as this. We take responsibility for our mindset. We declare a shift over our constitution right now. A shift right now in Jesus' name. We speak alignment right now over our spirit, our soul, and our body to stand to attention before your great throne of grace. 
We will be accountable for our thoughts. We will be accountable for the emotional disposition of our souls. We declare we are kings and priests on the earth. We are not victims of our mind, our will, or our imagination. We take responsibility. We say, yes, Lord. We say, yes, Lord. We say, yes, Lord to your presence that governs us, Lord, and to your will that is the plumb line for our lives. We bend our will into alignment with your will. And we say, Lord, let your will be done. Amen. Moses said, if I have found favor in your sight, show me your ways. How many of that's your prayer? Like, God, show me. Show me. 3D. IMAX me your ways. On the big screen. If I have found favor in your sight, open up your heart and reveal to me the contents of your heart. And please, in consideration of my request, be reminded this nation is your nation. God responds, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Let's read that together. My presence will go with you and I will give you rest. You would think that'd be the end. Like if that were me, if I were Moses, I'd be like, thanks God. That's what I needed. Talk soon. But what does Moses do? He comes back and he responds to the Lord. He says, if your presence will not go with me, are you following this? God just said, I will be the messenger. There's not, gonna, there's, there's not an angel. I'm it. You get me. I'm going to go with you. And what does Moses say? Okay. So if you're not going to go with me, <laughs> don't bring us up from here. Like, if you're not going, I'm not going. What if all the churches in Washington State said that? What if we said, well, God, if you're not showing up, I'm not showing up. But you're the pastor. You've got to show up. No, if he's not there, I'm not there. If he's not blessing it, I'm not blessing it. This is what Moses said. God, if you're, if you're not going to go with us, not one step further because I don't want the promised land without the promise look at uh, wow for how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight and I and your people look at is it not in you is it not in your going with us that we are distinct Is it not your presence, your manifest presence that separates us as a nation from all of the other nations on the earth? I and your people from every other people on the face of the earth. This is what, this is what, this is what Moses is saying. All the other nations, they're looking at us. They're laughing at us. They're mocking us. Why? Because we're the homeless nation. We're the wandering nation. He says, they're mocking us, they're jeering us, and they're ready to overwhelm us. This is what he says. God, we need your presence to so occupy us that when every nation sees us, they see the manifest presence of God, that there would not be a doubt that we are God's chosen, favored people. 
I think this is how we should be praying in 2021. God, I need your presence on my job. I need your presence on my business. I need your presence on my children. I need your presence on my home. I need your presence in my church. I need your presence in my imagination. I need your presence in my dreams. And not just your presence and not just a, your, a, just, not just a blessing. Moses was already blessed. He was already in the presence. He says, I need more. I need the kind of encounter where the very thumbprint of God is so blessed burned in my heart that everybody that encounters me knows that I have been set apart uh, and that I have been uh, segregated. I have been appointed. I have been bled. That I am a, a vehicle, an agent of heaven itself. This is what Moses says. There can't be anything ordinary about us as a people because we're yours. Seattle Revival Center, there can't be anything ordinary or common about us as a people. Why? Because we are beloved sons and daughters of God created for the earth for such a time as this. You need to shake yourself of the ordinary right now. You need to shake yourself of the mundane. Shake yourself of the natural, of that cognitive uh, uh, rule that would like to dictate the realm that you live in. You ain't ordinary. You were lied to. Re religion jacked us all up. He created you for such a time as this to reveal him. This is Moses. He says, I want to encounter you in such a special way that my very presence reveals your character and nature, your reality. How many of you, it's your desire to have an encounter with God that is so real that it actually trauma, like it, it reorganizes you on a cellular, like it reorganizes your whole thought process that you don't have to say anything. You don't have to do anything that when people are just near you, that your presence carves out the possibility and the inevitability that God is real and in the midst of them because you're in the room, because you're standing there, because you surrendered yourself in such a way. You made yourself available and God himself is occupying you and he's burning in you and carving in you the reality of his presence, his ways, his values, and his governments. Verse 17, And the Lord said to Moses, this is the very thing you have spoken that I will do. For you have found favor in my sight. Look at Moses says, do this. Burn in us for the sake of your nation. And what's God's response? This is the very thing I am about to do. He says, for you have found favor in my sight. And I know you by name. Moses said, that's all I needed to hear. Thank you, God. We are done. My heart feels good now. I've had my encounter. No! Moses is not done yet. It is not enough to hear God say, yes, I'm going to do everything you ask for. I know you by name. What does Moses say? He says, Please. You know what I hear when I hear please? I hear hunger. I hear desperation. He's there in the house of God with the manifest glory cloud of God. This is better than any revival meeting you have ever been into. And there, Moses, he with desperation in his heart, he says, please. How many of you have ever had a prayer when you came before God and it wasn't a dear God prayer and it wasn't even an oh God prayer? How many of you have ever had a prayer when you came before God and it started with, 
please. How many of you have ever had that moment of desperation when, when this was the deepest cry of your heart and you come before and you say, in light of your promise, you've promised, you've promised, you've promised, but right here, right now, this is not Moses, because Moses isn't getting a response yet. All, all Moses is getting is, 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 is the confirmation of a promise, but he's not looking for the confirmation of a promise. He's looking for God himself right then and right there. He says, please show me your glory. Like, wait, Moses, isn't there a glory cloud in front of you? Yeah, that's not what he was talking about. He was not talking about blessing. He was not talking about the cloud. He was talking about an encounter that would rewire him to the core of who he is. Show me your glory. And God says, I will make my goodness pass before you and I will proclaim before you my name, the Lord. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But, he said, you cannot see my face, for man shall not see me and live. And the Lord said, behold, there is a place by me. There's a place by me where you shall stand on the rock. And while my glory passes by, I will put you, hide you in the cleft of the rock. And then I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. And then I will take away my hand and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. Now, backs and faces. Backs and faces. But we just read here previously that Moses was one who would commune with God as though face to face. Don't think for a second here that when we're talking about the glory of God, that we're talking about the literal face and the literal back. It was Pastor uh, Troy Brewer from Open Door uh, Church that really kind of opened this up uh, for me in, in kind of, a, in a, kind of a, a, a fresh way because I've always thought, like, here's Moses begging, and, and, and people see the face of God. That happens, that happens throughout the Bible, and, and they don't die. It even happens even in, in, in human history. People have had encounters where they see the face of God. Even several people here in this room perhaps have maybe even seen the face of God, and you're, you're, you're still alive. So Moses is in the glory cloud of God, blessed of God, he's pleading with God for an encounter, and God says, I'll show you my backside. And he does. And this is not sight at the back of God. What this is, is it is an encounter. God takes him, he brings him into the rock, he covers him, and then when he, when he removes his hand, Moses there in the glory has an encounter with the backstory of humanity that is downloaded into him at that moment. This is an encounter that radically revolutionizes uh, who he is and his function and he gets downloaded in him at that moment the back story the timeline the record of all of humanity downloaded into him where now he can write with detail the encounter of Adam and Eve in the garden and he can begin to write about uh, uh, Enoch and he can begin to write about these these incredible uh, moments that he that he was not there for the 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 back story, the, the record of humanity in this encounter so that we could have our own written history of our own genesis of our beginning, but from the face, to see the face of God would be to see from the face forward, would be talking about the future from this moment in the presence leading into the future. We see that through Moses, we are given the record of God's faithfulness as accurately recorded in the books of Moses. But then we see Jesus, the true and perfect Moses, who comes to lead God's people, not, a, not out of Egypt, but out of our own slavery, out of our own sin, shame, despair, sickness, 
and disease. Jesus, the true and perfect Moses, that would come as a man in his perfection and die for the sinfulness and the fractured record of all of humanity. So that as of that point upon his death, there would be no more separation. The veil of separation in the temple torn so that for the very first time, sinful people could have access to a holy God. Jesus, the true and perfect Moses, who came, lived, died, resurrected, led the great exodus for all of humanity to have access to eternity through simple belief in Jesus and confession with our mouth. Jesus, I believe, I declare, you are my Lord, you are my King. I confess my sins, I receive your forgiveness. And in that point, in that union with Christ, we honor the, our, our history, but our eyes get enlightened. Our heart gets opened so that we can say, as the wise men said, for surely we have seen the face of God. And what is the face of God? It's this moment into the future, into the restoration of all things. It is the glimpse, it is the shadow of that which we have hoped for and not yet seen. And all of a sudden, the eyes of your heart get enlightened and you begin to see past the present moment of this timeline. And you begin to see your neighborhood differently. You begin to see your family differently. You begin to see your marriage differently. You begin to see Seattle differently. You begin to see Seattle Revival Center differently. You begin to see Pastor Darren differently. You begin to pray differently. You begin to worship differently. Why? Because you are having encounter after encounter, going from glory to glory, seeking and seeing the face of God from this moment into the future, this realization and revelation that the future has been downloaded into your heart. Solomon got a glimpse of it when he said that eternity has been embedded in to the hearts of man that within your DNA is the record of all of eternity. All of a sudden in a service like this, your heart begins to turn. Something in your spirit begins to yearn. You hear the knocking at your door and there is a desire to respond. There is this desire where you say, God, yes, I've been doing life outside of you. I've been doing life apart from you. But my answer is yes. I got lied to by religion, churchianity, cults, and world religions. I got lied to by social justice warriors that had their own manipulative agenda. I was lied to, but I choose this day whom I will serve. I will serve Jesus the Christ, this King of glory, this Ancient of days, this great I am. Jesus, you be my Savior. Jesus, you be my Lord. I will surrender everything to you. And then your heart is opened up, and all the attachments and ancestral curses begin to fly off of you. Chains begin to snap off of you as your spirit, as your spirit awakens with an Abba Father moment. Your spirit eyes open up. Your spirit mouth opens up as all of a sudden the fire and glory presence of God comes upon the new tent of meeting. Where you no longer visit the house of God. Why? You've become the house of God. All of a sudden, his glory, fire, and flame begins to reside within you. All of a sudden, you begin to dream different, think different, talk different. All of a sudden, the swear words don't come out as easily. All of a sudden, the anger doesn't come out as easily. You are now a tree. You are now uh, bearing what Paul would call the fruit of the Spirit, where love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control, it's growing. I'm changing. I'm not doing anything. I'm just abiding. I'm just resting. I'm just worshiping. I'm not performing. I'm not trying to be better, but I'm getting better. I'm not, I'm not even trying to be. I'm not trying to please people. I'm not trying to make people happy. I'm just abiding. I'm just abiding, but I can't help it. I'm transforming. This thing is alive. It's inside of me. It's the presence of the Holy God, of the Holy Spirit. He's encountering me. He's encountering me. He's encountering me. And I still want more. And I still want more of him. And I'm still desperate. And I still want to reveal him. And so I'm still coming to him. And he is here, and he is coming. And I see the Lord, and his train fills the temple. 
His glory is here. His glory is coming. It is increasing. It will increase. That you get what you expect. You will get what you are hungry for. And this is what we are saying. In 2021, we want to gather around the presence. We want to gather around this king. We want to gather around his high call and his mission. That his kingdom would come. That his will would be done. And that we would be his ambassadors, his diplomats, his soldiers of redemption and restoration. You read the books of Moses, guess what you saw? The backside of God. Engage with the spirit of Jesus and guess what you'll see? The face. The face of God. The face of God. The enemy always wants to get you obsessed with the backstory, get you obsessed with your past, get you obsessed with what happened yesterday, get you obsessed with what happened last week. It's my job to say, ah, 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 you look I. Daniel, you look I. Karate Kid reference, okay. Don't look at my eyes. Look at the face of God. Because when you see his face, you'll see the future. When you see his face, you'll see restoration. When you see his face, you'll see that all things are possible. It really is finished. I want you to declare this with me. Jesus, make yourself known in me. In you. In this, Jesus, make yourself known in me. Everyone say make. make. This word make, this is the cry of Moses. God, unveil yourself. Unfold yourself. Unwrap yourself. Uncover, undrape. Brand who you are, your government, your nature. Create in me, as David would say. Create in me a clean heart. What was David actually saying? Carve in my heart the record of your government. Make. God, make. Fashion. Form. You are the potter. I am the clay. I spin. You shape. Frame that over your year. Make. God, this year you're going to make, carve, brand, forge, burn, imprint. What? Yourself. You are the person. You are the content. You are the blessing. You are the values. You are the prize. You are the revealer. You are the revelator. I'm not looking for another book. I'm not looking for another conference. I'm not looking for another Darren sermon, although they are a good time. God, I'm looking for you. I will seek first the king and his righteousness. You make yourself, declare this with me, known. Known. How many of you that biblically that when a man would know a woman, oftentimes a baby would follow? It is a word, I always wondered as a kid, and he knew her, and they bear forth a child. It's like, like that. Like, hey, so now we know each other. Oh, pop, pop, there's a baby. It's better than a stork. This... There it is. <laughs> this word known, it communicates intimacy. It's the same word that before you were formed, framed, knit together, he knew you. Before you knew you, before your parents knew you, like Bobby Connor says, before you were even a spark in your parents' eyes. He knew you intimately. And now he wants to be known by you. Make yourself known. Reveal, disclose, release, expose. May the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth be unrolled 
within every fiber of who I am. And the last part, declare this with me, in me. I am the jump drive. I am the projector. Father, I am your screen. I am your movie. This was a picture of Jesus. Jesus says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen God. Make yourself known in me so that when people encounter me, they have an encounter with God himself. Go ahead, Chris. You can come out. Come out, come out, wherever you are. Make yourself known in me and make yourself known through me. We've had this idea in church, right? Like, I'll just, you know, I'll do my best. I'll try to be there as often as I can, but I got a lot going on. I'm a pretty important guy. Um, so I'll be there when I can. And I'll even, I'll even throw some money in. In fact, I got a lot of money. So every now and then, I'm just going <laughs> to, I'm just going to bless this place. <laughs> Because I got some money. So every now and then, I'm going to come to SRC. I'll be cool. I'm going to bless this place. It's going to be great. And Darren, you just do, you do you, boo. Like you, you got your podcast. You preach. You do your thing when you preach. So you just go after it. And then I'll just, I'll just make sure that you guys can kind of keep doing what you're doing. We've had this idea that when God calls us, what he's going to do is he's going to separate us. He's going to siphon us out of society. He's going to rescue you out of that evil corporate empire where they're just using your DNA to feed that antichrist globalist machine. We've got to get every believer, we've got to suck them and siphon them out of every secular mountain, get them in the church, get them preaching on this stage, and that has been like the model. Let's rescue you out of society, because society sucks. As exciting as that sounds... It is the most unbiblical, subconscious, normal narrative that most believe. I have heard it so many times. I'll do whatever it takes. I'll jump through any sort of hoops. What are a brother got to do to get a mic around here? You know, first we'll have to take care of that spirit of Jezebel. And if we get that, if we get that far, then we can... And what we don't realize is that we're too busy to practice any sort of minimalistic mindfulness that maybe that we are at where God has called us and that there's a grace on our life for us to make known through us the glory of God. And what happens is we begin to lust after platforms and positions and anointings. We begin to think that some are greater in the kingdom because of the amount of followers they have on Instagram. Or some are greater in the kingdom because of how many people go to a church. Or some are greater depending on, you know, how much we spent on our shoes. Jesus said, if you want to be great in God's kingdom, learn to be a servant. What Jesus taught us is that in the kingdom, everything's upside down. Everything's backwards. The last will be first. The least will be great. And then our desire and identity can't be rooted in what stage we have or by who thinks we're cool. That our desire has to be this. In 2021, all I want is the king. All I want is the king, his kingdom, and his righteousness. That we'd be like Moses. Say, no, your pro a promise isn't enough. 
Show me your glory. Let your glory come. Let your glory rewire me. Let your glory burn in me. Let your glory retrain who I am. Let your glory resonate in every cell of my body. Let me so burn and radiate that I don't, I don't need a, a church stage. I don't need a blog. I don't need any. I, God, you've given me people, places, things. You've given me anointing. I'm going to cultivate, 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 and I'm going to follow my favor. I'm going to give thanks for where I'm at. I'm going to give thanks for who I'm with. I'm going to appreciate this cup of coffee as if it were my last cup of coffee. I'm going to appreciate that dark chocolate that I ate back in 2020 that I'm not eating anymore because I broke all soul ties of food. And... Am I the only one? All right. I'm going to appreciate you because I know if I can honor you, it's going to pull out the best you. I'm going to give thanks for you, knowing that when I give thanks to you, it's going to multiply, because whatever Jesus gave thanks for, it multiplied. I'm not going to grumble and complain. Why? That's the dominant frequency of hell. I'm not going to accuse this year. Why? Because the accuser of the brethren is Satan. And he doesn't get to spend very much time with the Father in eternity, by the way. If you, I don't know if you read the book, Lake of Fire and stuff, not cool. If you'd say, Pastor Darren, this has not been my desire, but something is coming alive, and I need to reframe this reality over me in 2021. I want you to stand to your feet because I want to pray for you that a fresh fire would come upon you in this season and that you would burn with the light and life of truth and righteousness and peace and joy and that traditionalism wouldn't render your Christianity as useless. But that you would know that you're valuable because your father says that you're valuable. That you would know that you're powerful because you're in possession of the holy, glorious spirit, which is the spirit of Christ Jesus. And that in standing you say, I make myself fully available. Just put out your hands in just a receiving posture and just pray that prayer of Moses in your own words. However you say it. You have permission to talk while I'm talking. But just this once, you get the talking stick. I want you. I want your presence. God, Seattle Revival Center wants you. This place, we need your presence. We want your presence. Lord, let your fire so fundamentally reconfigure who we... I'm the only one talking. You need to start talking. I feel embarrassed. I'm blushing. Father, we need your presence. We value your presence. Father, let people come here and have an encounter with their creator and with their holy God. Lord, we ask for a revival of prayer, for a revival of fasting, for a revelation of our authority. God, we ask that you would bend us. We ask that you would burn in us, that you would forge in us, Lord, that you would unfold within us your government your righteousness and your ways lord show us your ways come on church pray seek the lord show us your glory show us your glory god show us your glory god show us your glory not just the cloud and not just gold flakes we want to see the face of god we want to see the burning eyes we want to see that place that begins to unfold within us the future of people places and things new realities restorative realities god prophetic realities come and burn god come and burn lord come and imprint god God, the record of your kingdom Lord the record of your kingdom God come and burn come and burn come and burn God come and burn come and burn let your glory come let your glory come let your glory come let your glory come 
Hey, let your glory come. Your fire, God. 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 Come and burn, God. Your fire, God. Your fire. The fire of God. The fire of God. Anointing of intercession. Prophetic intercession. Prophetic revelation. Coming forth like a fountain. Come forth. Come forth. Come forth. No restriction. No limits. No restriction. No limits. Let your glory come. Let your will be done, God. Your will be done, God. Burn, God. Burn, Lord. Burn, Lord. Your covenant flame. Your covenant flame, God. Your covenant flame, God. Your covenant flame. Stir. Let the winds of your glory come. Let the winds of your glory. Let the winds of your glory fill this home. Fill this home. Fill this place. Yeah, fill this place. Stir the waters. Let the angels stir the waters. Stir the waters. Stir the waters. Stir the waters. Come on, saints. Lift your voice. You can sing. You can pray. You can worship. Jesus is here. God is here. God is here. The waters are stirring. 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 Oh, Hey, if you need to give your life to Jesus, I'm going to count to three. I want you to run up here to the front. I'm going to lay hands on you. I'm going to believe that the Spirit of Christ Jesus is going to possess you and every chain is going to be broken in Jesus' name. Let me say it again so there's no confusion. You need to give your life. You need to surrender your all to Jesus. You need to have him break every chain. Now that there's no more confusion, I'm going to count to three. I need you to move. One, two, three. Get up here right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Come. 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 Yep, 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 yep. Right now. Right now. I'm telling you, Jesus can do in a moment what years and years and years of counseling can maybe achieve 50% of the time. In one moment, Jesus can do what years of supplements and medication, Jesus can do in one moment. The opportunity is to swap out a functional Savior for Jesus as your Savior. And I know, I know there are multiple, multiple people here this morning. And you, and, and, and you just don't want to be the only one. But there's not one. There are many people here. There are many people here. And, what, and I don't want for you to have that moment in the future where you would trade and you would pay to come back to this moment where you could surrender your life to Jesus. So come right now. 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 There is life and light. There is healing. There is freedom. Right now, right now, don't, don't say I'm going to do it when I get home. No, no, no. There is power in this place to set captives free. Hey, yep, 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 right now, right now, right now, right now. Sometimes you got to move. Sometimes you got to activate. Everybody wants six-pack abs, but nobody wants to work those abs out. You know what I'm saying? Move it right now. Move it right now. Move it right now. Oh, yeah. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom. Okay, go ahead and pull, take your hands and put, just put your hands over your eyes. Let's pray together. Father. Let your goodness pass before us. 
right before these eyes. your hands there until you until you see it because sometimes we don't see until we can close our natural eyes and learn to see what he sees sometimes in order to see we have to close our eyes let your goodness reframe our perspective let your glory 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 glory, the glory, that glory, let your goodness, let your glory, let your glory. Dinah, I felt like the Lord's gonna, has given you, may, maybe you already know this, but Thomas Kincaid was the painter of light, and it's like the Lord is, gonna, is giving you this gift where you're going to communicate and reflect his glory. You're going to be like the painter of glory. I know you've already done a lot with um, with gold and different things that the Lord has has shown you, and I know that there's a lot of stuff that you've created that's opened up people's eyes. So I bless what the Lord's already doing in you, and I just say more, more fire on that. Yeah, add your super to her natural God in Jesus' name. Stir it up. I see the Lord opening your eyes into that dimension, into that realm, and it's also it's more than painting. It's it's an anointing for business. It's an anointing for commerce. Even it's even consulting. I see you consulting. I see you sharing. I see it coming from a from a bubbling brook of laughter and hilarity. I see I see uh, you're you're one that that's going to come in to change atmospheres using art color word choice melody i see you using music i see the lord you're giving you full permission to use all the ingredients i i did not hear the lord say you've only been painting with paint and the lord says i've called you to to paint with sound light color texture i've called for you to create with all of the ingredients that physics and even that glory realm is able to create and you're going to create atmospheres that make a difference and, and people are you're you're going to it's like with the new atmosphere will come the new thought with the new thought will come the new behavior with the new behavior you know the, the new the new outcomes and the fruit and and production so lord i thank you lord um that D dinah won't be looking for people to understand her because she know it won't be about that she'll be communicating something in the spirit and people's spirits will perceive it and they will understand it so you won't be looking for understanding in completion from people. You'll be operating according to faith. You'll operate according to your, your, your sonship identity. You'll, there's a radical authority and a confidence in what you do. And people are going to partner with you without even knowing what they're partnering with. And they're actually partnering with the kingdom realm. And the kingdom uh, production and fruitfulness is going to come upon it. So, Lord, I thank you, Father. I thank you, Lord, that this is a year of, of, of expansion. I see a greater foundation being put in. I see, like... Uh, uh, like a new foundation, like a concrete foundation. Lord says, Lord says, um, uh, 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 Lord says it has begun. <laughs> it has already begun. It's a big foundation, and it's a lot. It's a it's a more facets and aspects than what you thought was possible. But it's something that's already in you. The ingredients are already in you. So I bless you in that. Matt, I see the faithfulness of God. I see that God has branded you with this faithfulness, with his loyalty. I see, I see uh, like a Barnabas anointing on you. I see one that vouches for one. I see, I see a real champion on you. I see like a, a David's mighty man. I don't see you as, as a man with a flag and a shofar. I don't see you like kind of like the, you know what I'm saying. Yes. <laughs> But I see you standing firm, and I see that the testimony of your life and record will be that Matt Rao was one who stood firm, and that he was a pillar in the church, that he was a strong place that people could run to and confide in. He was one that helped hold the roof up, and so I, I bless you in that. I bless, I bless, I see tremendous strength. Um, being like even physical strength being imparted tremendous physical and even spiritual energy that's being like deposited in you I see that that 
Dinah will never outrun you, that you will always have a grace to keep up with her, and, um, and, uh, and, and, but it's a different gifting, it's a different anointing that is on you. I see you running side by side. And right now, listen, if there's been something that has been coming against your energy in 2020, and, and some of you, even since you had COVID, have had an attack against your energy, and, um, and it's like, it's like, it, it just doesn't take for, it's just like you feel tired or that lethargy thing. Um, just hold out your hands right now. We're just going to believe that that thing is broken off. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your spirit, for your light, for your sound right now. In Jesus' name, I rebuke this spirit of lethargy. I rebuke this spirit of apathy. I rebuke any sort of demonic resonance, Lord, or any sort of um, disillusionment, even from being sick for those that suffered with COVID. And Lord, we entangle with the scripture that says for those who cavalry, for those who wait on the Lord, He will renew their strength. So Father, I pray for a, a deposit right now of the strength of God, Lord, for the fire of God to be dis- deposited right now. I said right now. I said right now. I said right now. In Jesus' name, supernatural energy and strength. I see like, um, I see even like this cloud, like this blue confusing green cloud that's been been over your head i want you just to command that to go right now in jesus name command the confusion to go say in jesus name, i command the confusion to go right now to go right now to go right now and by faith i receive a fresh fire over my mind over my will over my emotions over my body over my chemistry. I declare the fire of God over my hormones right now. I I declare the fire of God over my thyroid right now. Even in this place, thyroid conditions being healed right now. Uh, Even even in uh, 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 testosterone adjustments being made right now. Estrogen adjustments right now. And we declare the fire of God over our bodies right now. We engage with the blood of Jesus, with the body of Jesus right now in that place of divine communion. Thank you, Lord. You, you should be feeling something in your body. Just receive it by faith. That fire of God surging through your body, surging through your cells right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just declare this with me. Jesus, make yourself known in me. Make yourself known through me. We make ourselves available. We make ourselves available. I just, I lift, stretch out your hands towards Chris White. We lift up Chris. We lift up Melanie. We lift up Elizabeth Cooper. We declare restoration and recompense for anything that the enemy has tried to steal from them in 2020 as minstrels here at Seattle Revival Center. We declare redemption and restoration for the minstrels here and any sort of attack that they have come under since they are on the front lines. And we bless, we lose our blessing. Just speak blessing right now. Just declare Chris White. We bless you. We bless your family. We bless your children. Melanie Antonucci, we bless you. We bless your family. We bless your children. Elizabeth Cooper, we bless you. We bless your family. We bless your ministry. We lose blessing right now. We pray for fresh blessing over all our minstrels right now in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, that praise and worship We haven't seen anything yet. We thank you, Lord. There's going to be a rebuilding of the tabernacle of David in the heart of downtown Seattle. Yeah, where praise and worship begin to flow from the streets of downtown Seattle. We prophesy a new sound to Puget Sound. Just declare that. A new sound over Puget Sound. A kingdom sound. Kingdom sound. New melodies. New rhythms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We declare the salvation the salvation of 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 minstrels the salvation of psalmists we declare salvation salvation we declare a harvest of artists 
a harvest of artists in Seattle, a harvest of artists. Uh, yeah, a harvest of ar artists. Yeah, art galleries. Yeah, poetry galleries, prophetic galleries. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Even in the, um, you would read about in the past revivals, even in Ireland, that the glory would come down into the streets and begin to roll down the streets like a literal, visible ball of fire. God, we ask, Lord, for your balls of fire to begin to cleanse the streets of Seattle. We begin to cleanse First Avenue, Second Avenue, Third Avenue, cleansing Madison Street, covering uh, Yesler Street, covering Pike Street right now, Lord. We thank you, Lord. You're preparing the way, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The way is being prepared in Seattle. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You say, what are you doing? Jesus said, my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. We declare a harvest of apostles and pastors and teachers and evangelists in Jesus' name. A harvest of intercessors. A harvest of sons and daughters. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. We thank you, Lord. And guess what? You get to, you get to do this at home. You just pray, let the goodness of the Lord pass before me, right before my eyes. And all of a sudden, you begin to see the future. You begin to pray the future into the present. We lift up the kings and priests of Seattle. We lift up the kings. We lift up their thrones. We seek for the salvation and redemption of the kings in Seattle, Lord. We ask, Lord, for Nehemiahs and Daniels. Yeah, to be sent in in this time. And we bless your Nehemiahs. We bless your Daniels. Lord, in this time, they're at the right hand of kings. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let your kingdom come. In Jesus' name. Everybody said. If our ministry team could come, if you need prayer for anything, come up. We'd love to pray with you. love to stand with you. Otherwise, God bless you. We'll see you next Sunday. It's going to be wild. Sunday morning, Sunday night. Take care.